So, aconite, futa processing. Here we have some gentlemen that are in uh, Yunnan, or Sichuan, in uh, Zhangyo province, in the kind of major futa Daudi producing region. Just cleaning off some of the dirt from the tubers that have just been harvested. Um, this is me. That's my hand. <laughs> yeah. I posted these pictures on the internet and got a bunch of comments how I needed to wash my hands and I was lucky I didn't die just from touching them. And, and, um, and I hesitated to comment back that actually I'd touched about 25 times that many tubers that day and then went home and peeled them with my bare hands. So um, that being said, that's all stupid, essentially. It's not wise. <laughs> <laughs> That's my disclaimer to save my own bacon right there. Like, don't do it. Um, I've actually taught, like, done these things, like the whole stupid Shenong path of, like, how much toxicity can I absorb, you know? And this year I harvested, say, five pounds or more of aconite and processed all of it by hand and made it through about three quarters of it and started having a toxic reaction or like the smallest little bit of it so that as soon as I stopped touching it and walked away like the symptoms would have went away but it was like I was absorbing a lot of aconite, aconitine, diester, uh, diterpenoids so um, yeah this is and we also have methods for detoxifying if it would have got that bad I could have I was prepared to start making my mung bean gone sour black bean soup <laughs> um, aconite alkaloids it's not a laughing matter. Um, it's good to understand what's going on with them. So the physiological effects of the aconite alkaloids is analgesic, anti-inflammatory, anesthetic. Um, so I have, let's, like, let's pass some of these things around. Um, so the first thing that we're talking about is sawu and chuanwu. And so this is sawu, or actually muto. So this is the radix of Aconite carmichaelia, which is more for wind and pull pain. And then, um, and then this is uh, shunkutsa, which is the unprocessed tuber. And then this is piles of, of different processing methods, which we'll get to in a minute. But let's just circulate this stuff around so people can see what we're talking about. Um, yeah, so uh, Chuan Wu is more for uh, B, more for pain, high, better analgesic function because it high, has higher levels of. Uh, aconite alkaloids. And then Futsa has a little bit lower concentration of aconite alkaloids. Futsa is the attached tuber. Futsa means attached child. So when we look at the, the roots of aconite carmichaelia, it'll be a radix, and then the tuber will be attached to it, to the side. And there may be more than one, there may be many, two, three, even four little attached tubers. They're the attached children. Um, so Futsa is a little bit less toxic, it has more robust function. The toxicity itself of aconite is due to the presence of these diester diterpene alkaloids, aconitine, mesoconitine, and hypoaconitine. Aconitine is the most toxic. This is due to the two ester groups. The ester groups are located, uh, these things, number one and number two, and that's what is going to fall off during processing to reduce the toxicity. So the toxicity itself, due to the aconite molecules, uh, aconitine, alkaloids is due to the inactivation of voltage dependent sodium channels so they go in there and they bind to the sodium channels and then the sodium channel can't repolarize and, and, and can't fire again so the cardiac cells can't fire again so you end up the heart and nervous tissues get stuck in a, refra a refractory state and then you have all this the onset of all these symptoms pretty rapidly numbness of the mouth tingling of the hands and feet and then if you keep going or you've taken a massive dose of it then you'll end up with nausea vomiting hypotension ventricular tachycardia and at some point, likely death. Um, the literature will say that the lethal dose, the lethal dose of aconitine is two milligrams. Uh, in a retrospective review of 17 patients that ingested herbal aconitine, the recovery time for mild toxicity was one to two days, and the recovery time for more severe cardiovascular complications was about seven to nine days. Some of us know somebody down in San Francisco who was grinding up uh, aconite to use uh, and as to do an alcohol extraction on it, and in the process of grinding it, inhaled enough of it to then have a fairly severe toxic reaction that took about a week or more to overcome 
while consistently treating themselves with all of the standard detoxification methods. So that's the, the most severe reaction I've heard of anybody within our community. The clinical perspective, uh, Futsa is one of the most important herbs in the entire medicine. There's entire schools dedicated to its use. You could almost say that NCNM in, Port in Portland is dedicated to its use. That's sort of going too far. It's just that Heiner Frohoff, the dean and president, or the dean of NCNM, is a, is a member of the Huoshen Pai, the fire god school. So the Huoshen Pai is, is all about Futsa. Uh, Hush, anyway, from a technical point, the Hush and Pai it, it focuses on only on, only on the treatment of Shaoyin disease, and the major herb for the treatment of Shaoyin disease is Futsa. If you're a practitioner, then you know what that jargon meant. Uh, 200 plus years of clinical experience, herbal combination experience, processing experience, cultivation experience allows for this type of thought process to be less insane than it might seem on its surface. You're like, oh, what the hell? Everything we hear about aconite is just poison. Poison, poison, poison. How the hell do you use it in medicine? Yeah. In Chinese medicine, we, had, we use dog poop, too. So, I mean, figure out how we... <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Flying squirrel poop. Um, so, <laughs> there's some weird affinity to try to turn the worst thing imaginable into a medicine. Vivian. Well, is there any toxicity in the plant? Yeah, there is a lot. So, there's that story. Yeah, every part of the plant is toxic. Yeah. They're showing up in yeah, I mean, it's interesting, like, one of those things that came out last year was that there was, like, uh, and this is totally, uh, I think it's total BS. So there was a story from England that this guy, he was, like, a gardener, and he was on some massive estate, and, like, this massive estate had aconite flowers on it, and he was a gardener, and he touched them, and then, like, and then he got hospitalized, and then a week later he died from organ failure. And then his dad, and then they did some pharmacology on him or something, and it found out he had aconite alkaloids in him, I think. And then he died, and so they're blaming the aconite. But it's like most people die from aconite in a day. It's an acute toxic response. This guy died of organ failure like a week later. And so I think that the story in that case is probably a lot more interesting in a way. Or he might have had a, like a secondary autoimmune response to the aconitine, where it looked like some, it mistook it and then uh, developed uh, antibodies to it. And then those antibodies ended up leading to this type of multiple organ failure. Uh, very hard to tell that story in the media because it's complex and that's not the way the media works. So another term for aconite is the king of the hundred medicinals, which is, means it's just the king of all the medicinals. The only people that say that are the, the uh, Hoshan and Pai people. Uh, most people think that aconite is, should be left in a corner somewhere and only taken out around Halloween. So it's acrid sweet, it's really hot, it's really toxic, it enters the heart, the kidney, and the spleen, but it returns the yang and it stems counterflow and uh, nourishes the fire, supplements the yang, drives out wind and, and cold damp evils. It's useful for yang collapse, cold extremities with a minute pulse. A minute pulse is like, try to feel your pulse. And if you can feel it, you don't have a minute pulse. <laughs> Pretty, I will just leave it there. So, um, <clears throat> yang wilting. We can, there's a, a lot of different types of uh, wilting diseases. I mean, obviously, you could think of that as just impotence, but there's also types of muscle atrophy that would be young wilting. Uh, uh, uterine cold, acute pain in the pit of the stomach, the acuity cold with vomiting and diarrhea, yin cold water swelling, yang vacuity, contraction of external evils, etc., etc. Um, <clears throat> so, processing or reducing the toxicity of aconite is sort of a combination of a multifactorial process. The first two that we look at are the, the, the region that it's grown in. There's a lot of belief that you need to grow aconite in the Zhangyo region for it to have the least toxicity. At least this is what the people that are living in Zhangyo and selling you the Zhangyo Futsa will tell you. And if you're importing it and selling it, you'll say the same thing too. Uh, from my experience, it's more a product of processing to get detoxification than it is to have it grown in the right place, um, but <clears throat> growing region will affect the uh, accumulation of aconite alkaloids. I mean, it's also interesting to think that the <clears throat> actually having really good quality futsa means having really toxic futsa. <clears throat> but uh, to primarily pr produced in Sichuan and, and Shanxi province, the main growing region is Zhangyo, uh, and then also the traditional harvesting techniques is important to harvest at the last 10 days of June till the first 10 days of August. 
If you harvest it too late, you'll notice uh, the development of new shoots on the tubers as it starts to prepare for the next year's growth. The new shoots on the tuber will change its chemistry because it's going to need new different growth hormones at that stage. And so you end up having a totally different medicinal which may have more toxicity. The processing window or the harvest window from the last 10 days of June till the first 10 days of August typically involves the summer solstice and this is the ideal day to harvest aconite where we have this whole ritual around the summer solstice of taking ungodly amounts of aconite to prepare for the winter solstice on the summer solstice and all this stuff and harvesting it and um, yeah so realistically a lot of it is the the, the, pro the detoxification is more on this slide so being the traditional powder processes and then also interherbal alchemy um, interherbal alchemy on one hand is making the right diagnosis if you give aconite to someone that has a hot stomach and is constipated, you will get a really bad reaction out of them. If you give aconite to someone that's got a deep pulse and they're really cold and cold extremities and a pale face and they have really loose stool and really poor digestion, you're likely to have a much better response. Um, and that's not necessarily toxic, that's just because it's really hot. And if you can't have no way of dispersing heat because your stomach is closed, then you're just going to turn into a ball of fire and experience something really bad because of that. Um, the herbal combination techniques are a little bit uh, more chemically sound. I mean, typically aconite is very, very, very frequently combined with gonsal, with, with licorice root. And so licorice root, um, one of the main constituents in licorice root is glycerizin, and glycerizin forms, um, it binds with the aconite and then drops out of solution together. So it reduces the solubility of aconitine by up to almost 30%. And then the radix glycerizo will reduce the LD50 of FUTSA to, in that sense, a very, very, uh, well, it'll make it really high. So it's processing with, with ginger will reduce the toxicity because it's, say, like the LD50 of FUTSA standard would be like 20 grams. So if you add processed with ginger, our process with licorice LD50 will probably double. Um, so the combined use of glyceriza and aconite is, is a safe pair in TCM formulations. This is important things, you know, from going from um, proper processing to proper herb combination to proper diagnosis are effective ways to allow for the use of aconite therapeutics.